starship next service. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nadia, and I am your chief flight attendant. If you have any questions about our flight today, please internalise them until we arrive. <laughs> Kepler astronomers have detected a curious signal that appears to be emitting from an exoplanet in the Cygnus constellation. Let me tell you about your spaceship. The spaceship is based on a design from Project Orion. Project Orion was a 1950s, 1960s NASA mission was to send humans deep into space. Now their propulsion system was based on throwing nuclear bombs off the back, which would then propel spacecraft forward up to something like 10% the speed of light. Now in the end, the mission was cancelled because of the risk of nuclear fallout at launch. But we have a different propulsion system. Get those Greenpeace hippies off our backs. We're using matter-antimatter annihilation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to enter our first period of hypersleep, a special state of consciousness induced by an invisible gas, which we'll release into the room. This is perfectly normal, although it's never been tried before. As we prepare for takeoff, please ensure your adults are fastened, your seatbacks are in the upright position, and any small children are safely stowed in the overhead lockers. There is no reason to be alarmed. Aliens aren't some sort of reptilian life form <laughs> who interpret that as um, a signal of uh, war. Um, and this come to earth, traffic jams, really kind of selling what we've got. Um, I think the food images are my favourite because they, I mean, it just looks very fraught, this dinner party. He is, he's absolutely panicking there. And, um, this this image, I, uh, I <laughs> my mind sort of breaks. I've never had a dinner party like this. She's eating an ice cream. He's eating a piece of, piece of toast. How is he drinking that? <laughs> um, as you know, the computer wakes us up if anything interesting happens, and something apparently has. The computer got bored. It has been over sixty years since we first detected alien radio signals. The signals have given us entertainment, scientific insight, and a terrifying glimpse into just how fragile life is. But even though that division looks completely empty, it's not quite. There's tiny kind of snowflakes, little particles of ice. And the recording I've got for you here is a genuine recording made by the spacecraft as it plunged right through the middle of those rings and recorded every time a little particle in those rings kind of slammed against it. And this, sound, this, to me, sounds exactly like driving on a really kind of wet, rainy day and hearing the kind of pitter-patter of raindrops against your windscreen. This is the pitter-patter of the rings of Saturn against a spacecraft flying through it. This blows my mind every time I hear it. as we went through the middle and they kind of tail off as we came out the other side, or to my ear. Ah, so this isn't this microphone, this is the radar that it's using beneath Voyager's... Um, 
so what he did was he he made literally hundreds of them. Um, the, he retired to Hooks, which is just outside Dublin. Um, it's where Marconi made the first um, ship to shore transmission. Yes. So it's actually very famous, um, the Kingston Regatta. Um, and there's a, a radio museum there. Um, but it also had the first uh, wired um, Morse signal from the UK mm. to Ireland. Um, so it's very it's very famous place. Um, so, but that is a helical resonator. Um, so what they do is they, they pick up a very narrow frequency band, yes. um, but they're much better than mm. the, the copper wire coils. Um, so they, they can only pick up a really narrow frequency band. Mm. So he made literally hundreds. And they can also pick up medium wave and FM frequencies as well. So as is, the, is this tunable? It then? is tunable. So this, it's this not working at the moment. Not it's not working anymore. But, but, it, but it could pick up a range. Yes, so it had a range of about 10 megahertz. We developed the technology so we could the first time try and do something about the question, are we alone? And for 50 years on Earth, they've been looking for a signal which would show there's intelligent life out there in the universe. And this became known as SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, to my mind, one of the most exciting scientific adventures um, that the human race has ever undertaken. We're, we're actually only a few decades away from living forever, in fact you're going to be the last generation or die. <laughs> you know, if medical science progresses at the way it's going, your grandchildren, children, grand, children born this year, may never die. And, and, but you're all going to die. You can, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, after after 100,000 years of Homo sapiens, you're, you're going to die just before the end. <laughs> it's, it's going to be a real bummer. <laughs> Sorry to wake you all up again. Um, we have actually received a third message from the alien civilization, uh, which the computer has been translating while you're asleep. So um, I think it's ready to play on the machine now. Um, don't know what this is going to be. Presumably they know we're quite close by now. So um, all a bit nervous about this one. But let's uh, see how they how they react. This species from the planet called Earth have no collective memory. As one planet, we must face these aliens and say, Sorry, nobody's home. 